let's move on to Shivers from 1975, which in a nutshell is about the residents of an apartment building who are being infected by a strain of parasites that turn them into mindless, sex-crazed people, I guess, who then in zombie-like fashion seek to infect all the other people that they run into. Obviously a movie I've heard about for quite some time, actually never bothered to watch it up until now. I've never been... Like, I've always wanted to enjoy David Cronenberg's stuff. Like, so bad, I, 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 would, I would really like to enjoy his stuff, but... I don't know, I just can't. I don't... That's not to say that everything I watch of his I don't enjoy, but... I certainly haven't ever had a great time with any of his movies so far. And I've watched pretty much all, at least all of his, like, popular stuff. Like, the, the, the type of movies that get brought up all the time. And I, I think out of all of those, the best one was probably The Fly. And that was, you know, definitely no higher than a 7 out of 10 movie for me. I don't know if it's the body horror aspect of his movies, like I've never been a huge body horror type guy, and I don't believe you are either, but y you might enjoy some of his movies a little, maybe more than I do, at least on average. And you know, Shiver's not really an exception to this. I felt like the movie, even though there's a few things that happen in the first half of the movie, I, f I was quite bored, at least up until somewhere around the halfway mark where, you know, people start going around infecting others, like, on a more consistent basis, I guess. You know, to the point where it's not slowing down and then every second scene is someone getting attacked. And, you know, at that point, okay, I, I, I was getting a little more entertained, I guess you could say. So, yeah, I, I didn't have a great overall time with it. It has its up and downs um, for me. Mostly downs to begin with, and some ups later on. Yeah, it's it's actually somewhat amusing because I have a um, a bit of a reversed opinion. I actually think the first 30, 40 minutes were some of the strongest parts of the movie, and once it turns into more of a, I guess you could say, a sort of a more generic zombie type thing, I my interest goes down a bit. Like once everybody's infected and starts running around, I, I mean, it's still interesting. But I just don't care as much. I sort of like the um, almost snowballing effect. You know, you just see a few sick people and then slowly things get more and more out of hand. And by the time that one guy gets there, I think his name's Rallo. Um, by the time he gets there, and he's been trying to get there throughout like most of the movie. Once he gets there, like, things are totally screwed up. It's way too late anyway. And I, I think the ending's decent. But I think that the movie's strongest wins almost, almost feels like a sort of procedural type thing just we sort of go through the lives of some of these people I uh, get a few different points of view uh, you know wife with a sick husband just a doctor uh, then you see this really random more that happened in the beginning with no contact so I, I think uh, some of the more not necessarily mystery but some of the build up is a little at least for me it's a little more enjoyable than the uh, what follows after hmm yeah, it, do, it does have a bit of a, like, a zombie-type movie vibe to it, even though it's still, you know, it, it's obviously still more of a parasite creature-type movie. But yeah, you got, you got those scenes where they're all just as a group, you know, slowly moving towards you, and, um, like, especially towards the end there. You know, I was pretty disappointed that the, uh, nurse got attacked when she did because she was probably the only character I kind of cared about in the movie. Is it that just because she got naked? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but uh, she was kind of cute, you know, I, I guess. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the finest woman in the movie, I guess. So I gotta try and save some of the booty. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and that, that main doctor guy, his blonde hair was driving me nuts. Yeah, it's, it's funny. He sort of reminded me of a uh, cheap ripoff of some other actor with blonde hair, whose name I forget right now. 
mm. which loses it to Fox since I forget the name. I think it's David Soul. So, um, I guess one other, well, a few other things I appreciated about this. One, the beginning of the movie starts off with sort of a, um, an advertisement to live in this apartment complex. Uh, it's a li- little, little boring, but, you know, totally 70s. But I think it's a, a somewhat interesting look at trying to pull people into just purchasing an apartment here. And, you know, I thought it was actually a pretty okay advertisement what you could get past how boring it is. I sort of like the idea of, hey, this apartment complex has everything you need. It has a doctor, it has, like, uh, you know, magical facilities, it has convenience stores, it has everything. So I sort of like that. And also, what I enjoyed was, I think it's like, it's just 14 minutes away from the city. Um, and it's on, like, a, the apartment complex itself is on this somewhat small island. So it, obviously they have a bridge connecting it. But it sort of gives it almost a um, uh, somewhat secluded feel. Which I think works once you get toward the end of the movie too. So I I enjoyed the setting and I sort of enjoyed how they I guess uh, set up the location, even though um, it's not like necessarily original. But I I did enjoy the the whole hey it's out taking place in this one you know pretty big apartment complex and you know I, I don't know I just had a I, I had a more decent time with this than I usually do with Cronenberg movies because. Um, as you said, I'm I'm not like a huge Cronenberg fan myself. Well, despite my lack of enjoyment overall for this movie, I, I, like I'm sure I'll still give it another chance at some point. But yeah, this time it just didn't do it for me. Out of interest, um, did you enjoy this uh, more or less than The Brood, or are they pretty much like on the same? I would say slightly less. And that's mainly because, despite the brood having some of the same similar problems, and like like I said, you know, it's he he tends to always do this body horror type stuff. I think there was just a little more going on in the brood, like you, you you've got the kids, and you know you've got the mother at the end, and um, I feel like there was a bit of a build up to what was going on there, whereas, I mean, obviously there was a build-up here, but I guess it just, the story of it didn't uh, grab me, I guess, but, look, I I enjoyed them fairly similar, on on a similar level, but I I would certainly probably pick the brood over this one. It's the wrong choice, but I do understand. (laughs) Though, I do remember... That one woman in the brood who had like the one of the worst haircuts I've ever seen in film ever. I, I do remember you spent quite some time talking about that, and I was just sitting here like, okay. <laughs> and so, anyone out there listening, if you want to hear more about that, go find our review for the brood. You will be informed. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I've. I really want to enjoy Cronenberg stuff, but I've, I've just never been able to get into most of his movies. And I see his son is making movies as well. There's a new one called Possessor, which, you know, looks interesting. I'll I'll give it a shot, but uh, it makes me wonder if, you know, he's going to do just kind of more of the same. But in any case, uh, Chivers... It, it took a while to get going, about halfway through, then I started to enjoy some of the stuff that was happening, but as an overall movie, I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. I didn't have a great time with it. It wasn't terrible, and, and like I said, I will give it another chance, and there's there's always a chance of me enjoying it more, and you know, if it can work its way up to a 6 out of 10, hey, at least that'd be something. <laughs> Indeed. So this is a movie um, that I enjoyed the first time I saw it, and I, I enjoyed this time around too. I, I do think it's a great movie, and it's also worth mentioning, I, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but at least in some places, this movie is also known as uh, They Came From Within, um, which is the title I saw the movie under when I first saw it many years back, so it's the same movie, guys. I enjoyed this a bit more than I usually, usually enjoy Cronenberg, like, if you ask me if which Cronenberg movie I'd prefer, like, Brood, Video Jump, Shavos, 
uh, Rabbit, Schaefer should probably be my go-to movie, if only because I like the setting, and while there is body horror elements, I feel like it's more in line with something I'm okay with. Like the, the, the idea in this movie is like this guy's trying to create a parasite that can sort of take over the function of like an organ. So like if just create a parasite that can sort of take over a liver's function and then the parasite gets out of control because well this guy's insane guy who does stuff. But that seems a little more in line with I don't know what I consider reality you know, compared to what the brood had or what Video Drum had. I, I, to be honest, I don't even know what Video Drum had. Video Drum is such a strange movie. Um, but this one seems a little more real to me. And it helps that it has a very savage feel to it. Which I know some people might consider dry, but I always sort of enjoyed the atmosphere of this. So I think overall, it's one of, at least based on what I've seen so far, one of my favorite Cronenberg movies, even though, like I said, I don't love it. So I'm going to give this one a 7.5 and I think I'm going to round that down to a 7 out of 10 but I do think it's a smidge above average, it's just not fantastic. Yeah, uh, I'm just not sure about that. I, I deeply apologize. 